Hello, my online fam. How are you today? I am here to teach you how to paint a denim jacket. This happens to be a camouflage jacket that my client asked me to customize for her. And I'm going to take you step by step how I did it. I'm actually doing a lot of angels right now. I'm working on angels on this bed. Um, I did some angels on a wine bottle recently and my client has asked me to do this jacket. I cannot wait to take you through the entire process. I hope you love it. Um, it's adorable. Yes. It can be washed. Um, it can be washed, hung to dry, washed on cold water, gentle cycle. The paint will not wash out. Um, your message will be seen loud and clear and it will be here forever and ever. All right, so let's get right to business. I have my denim jacket laid out nicely in front of me. I'm using a Mr. Bottle and some very, very watered down chalk mineral paint. I believe this is drop cloth from Dixie Bell. Um, I do have a very thick beach towel folded up underneath this jacket just to provide some cushion. I've also got the jacket folded um, or buttoned on the front side. And if I didn't have that thick padding in between, when I'm covering this background with paint, your paintbrush is going to hit those hard buttons from the front side and you're going to end up with these uh, sort of like circle impressions or the pocket impression that's going to come through if you don't have like a thick padded uh, surface between the front and the back. What I really want to drive home here is that I'm painting the background before I paint my paint design for the jacket. That's what's important by sharing this part with you is a lot of times people will just grab a denim jacket, they'll pick out their design that they want to do, and they'll just paint their design directly on the denim. And you can do that. I think it looks a little bit, vint you know, it's kind of got that vintage retro vibe for sure, almost like a patch or patchwork. But if you've got something that you want to do artwork wise, it's really easier to paint if you paint the background first paint the background um, whatever color you want. Here I'm actually going to bring in about five or six colors. Very abstract. Um, you could do it a solid color. Uh, but what it does is it the paint soaks into the threads of the fabric and it sort of creates a canvas for you that's a lot easier to create artwork on top of. So here I'm bringing in the second color. This is a terracotta that I'm bringing in. And you'll see that I use my Mr. Bottle a lot. You want to keep the fabric really wet. I don't want this to be thick and piled up paint on top of the fabric. I don't want my paint to be sitting on top of the fabric. I want it to soak into the threads of the fabric. So I just introduced a third color there, which is Rusty Nail. Um, and I'm just working these paints together with a lot of water. I brought in um, I believe that is evergreen on the far side there. We see a little bit of a teal green um, and I'm even going to bring in some antebellum blue into it here in just a minute. But I do all over coat and then I come back and just start re-adding a little bit more to it. But the entire time, all of it is very, very wet, which is why the beach towel in between comes in really, really handy. All right, so my background is done. I'm ready to move on. You saw my inspiration photo there. All I've got is a marker, a piece of chalk, and a chalk pencil. That is Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, and that is what my client has requested that I paint on the back of this jacket. And I'm going to tell you, this is very, very much out of my comfort zone. It is a pretty... Um, pretty advanced drawing that I wasn't really ready for, but I love a good challenge and I thought I'd give this a try. And what I hope that this will do for you is push you out of your comfort zone as well. Um, you know, we don't have to stick to stick figures. We don't have to stick to a flower um, or a tree or a cat or a dog. Try something that really moves you or moves your client and just give it a shot. By doing it in chalk, this is a chalk pencil that I'm using. Um, by doing it in chalk, you can just rub out your mistake. You can just rub it off with a wet cloth, your thumb, a baby wipe. You'll see me do that as I move on with this drawing. I'll, I'll do some sketch sections that I don't like at all and I just rub it off and, and keep going. Also, I want you to notice that I'm moving. Um, I do have this sped up for you, but you can see that my, this is truly a sketch. Like my motions with my pencil and the chalk are not smooth. They're just sort of the idea of a, of a leg there that you saw me doing and sort of rub out. The idea of a drape around the angel. The idea of a boot. That's really really what I'm looking for here is just the idea of the shape and not a perfect shape. 
And there's the, the actual inspiration photo. And there is my drawing. And don't get me wrong, you guys, I am not heading into this with confidence. I am a nervous wreck when I started this. So I think I like my drawing. This is where the Sharpie comes in. I don't wanna lose my chalk as I start to paint because I'm gonna be using a lot of water and it will just wash your chalk off. So I go ahead and set my drawing by using a Sharpie marker. So I'm just gonna take this marker and move it everywhere, all over the lines. Again, you can see that I'm moving it to sort of haphazardly, not like a super perfectionist line. I'm just sort of sketching it out and um, giving myself an area to start adding paint to. It's when you start adding the paint is when um, things need to be a little bit more realistic, but not right now. This is just a sketch. And there we go, that's the drawing. We are ready to bring in some paint. So I'm using small craft brushes and it looks like I'm painting, but you can't see anything, right? Because that was water. So wherever I'm gonna lay paint down, I always lay water down first. Have you ever watercolored? If you haven't, um, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not, when you watercolor, you actually lay water down on your paper first, and then you bring the watercolor pigment into that watered down area. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I never paint without laying a layer or a coat of water down onto that area first. In addition to laying water down first, I also, you'll see my hand go left and right. I'm dipping into the paint and then I go dip into the water and then I put it on the jacket. So my, my paint, you barely use any paint. It's very, very thin. It's still soaking into the fabric of the jacket and that's what you want. You want it to be able to move around freely um, in a, on a very, very wet surface. And then sometimes I'll, I'll be working with such thin paint that, that when it dries, it almost disappears. So I go ahead and add another layer of water and another layer of paint to that. But I'd rather start with less than too much because I don't want my paint piling up on top of my fabric. I've brought in a new color here, which is sort of a flesh color. Um, I did the sash, added a little bit to the sleeves, and I'm just gonna sort of um, bring in this flesh color to the face, the arms, and the legs. Okay, I love this part right here. Do you see the water moving um, in the red of that drape? So I, I put a lot of water on that drape, and then I dip my brush into the red paint. This is Honky Tonk Red and then I dip the, the brush on the paint in water and bring it over to this water puddle area and you can really see the paint move around inside the wet fabric. I really, really like that part. All right, again, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I just laid down a lot of water in the area where the drapery is gonna be. Actually, I, I went too far. I went up into the wing. I didn't realize what I was doing, but it doesn't matter. Um, I got all of that area wet, and now I'm gonna introduce some red. You see that? It just flows so easily. You should be able to smear this around very, very easily. You should not see any piled up paint at all. This is such an important part to see the water go down first. I actually had um, someone reach out to me this past week. She was making a bunch of jackets to sell in her boutique and she'd already painted a lot and she was really worried about the paint cracking. And um, she evidently had not taken, I have a painting course that offers how I paint on denim and I tell you step by step exactly how to do this. And one of the things that I really push is to use a lot of water. And she said, oh no, I haven't been using any water at all. So I do worry that if you get too much piled up paint, um, the paint may crack on you. But in this instance, where the paint is moving down into the fibers of the, the fabric and I've never in all of the pieces that I've ever painted, never had any issues with cracking at all. So what I'm doing now is I'm bringing in a different color on top of the Honky Tonk Red. And this is where I start to add like my shadows and highlights and I wanna show the movement in the drapery that is around the angel so that it doesn't just look like a flat one dimensional photo. You can see here the drapery on the left shows a lot of movement with the different colors. All right, so we're gonna start on the wings. Again, I'm delivering a lot of water to the wing area and I'm gonna bring in some black paint to introduce to the lower part of St. Michael's wings here. And I used, picked up a different brush. You'll see instead of an angled brush or a squared off brush, I'm now using um, a brush that allows me to press down and get sort of that rounded edge. So it looks like the edge of a wing or what I imagine the ed edge of an angel wing would look like. 
this was really easy. Really, I love doing wings anyway. I, I like using wings um, with all sorts of different mediums, but I really like this process. It's a lot of fun to use a different brush just to get that shape. All right, so now we're just filling in all around the sword and the arm. We're just gonna fill in both sides of the wings, continuing to use a lot of water. We're using some black, we're using a little bit of white in there as well, a little bit of drop cloth, just to give our wings some depth and shape. So my client had asked for words to be added. She wanted um, a couple of messages. I've already done it across the back, defend us in battle. And she wanted um, hold the line painted on the arm. It's a very personal statement for her. Again, I just sprayed the sleeve with a lot of water. I coated it with um, a few stripes of white paint that I also um, include a lot of water in. And now I'm just using a one quarter inch flat brush and I'm just free handing hold the line. Now it's time to uh, prep this to be sealed. I'm using a rad pad to sand off the outer layer of my artwork here. You just wanna give it a light sanding, brush it off with a brush. Now I'm gonna use the Dix Dixie Belle Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I just poured into a cup and I brush the spray wax over my artwork. This actually sets the artwork and will keep it like new forever. I cover everywhere that I've painted. Easy peasy spray wax everywhere. And here we go, hold the line. This is me wearing my client's jacket. I love this so much. I hope I get to do a lot more artwork on the sleeves of denim jackets. I think this looks amazing and I hope she loves it as much as I do. I, I think a lot of people will see this and hear her message and I hope you've enjoyed this today. Please like and subscribe and we'll be back with a new video next Sunday.